Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And of course, I am, as always, I'm your pastor, R.C. Blakes Jr. And I'm so excited today, and I want you to really dial in today to hear the word of the Lord. Um, if you would, I, I, I encourage you to invite someone to come in and to be a part of this, because I believe that this discussion today is going to be life-changing. You know, the Bible talks about how he's given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Well, this is going to be one of the discussions that really digs down into the lives of people where people live on an everyday basis and will empower you to overcome some of the things that are within us that um, sabotage our own greatness. I was led really just a few weeks ago to bring this message to you, the tragedy of insecurity and how to overcome it. There are so many people that are struggling, literally struggling with insecurity. It's, um, it's the silent pandemic. It's the pandemic that has gone on for generations since Cain and Abel, and it still rages today. People are just insecure. I, I see it all of the time. And, and don't get me wrong, all of us on some level, on some level, in some way or another, we have our insecurities. But when you are well-adjusted, and when you are a healthy person, you are able to recognize your own insecurities and deal with them. If you're not empowered to deal with them by yourself, you find someone that helps you to process your own personal insecurities. I believe that's a major part of the church. I believe the, the purpose, one of the major purposes of the church is to help people to adjust their thinking, to help people to adjust their souls. As David said, he restoreth my soul. Now, to be insecure, it's, you know, boils down to lacking confidence or trust. You know, if it's internal, you, you, you don't trust yourself, you know, to, to take the big shot. You don't trust yourself. Uh, to move on the vision. You don't trust yourself to step into the opportunity. But when those insecurities bleed out into our relationships, it, it becomes internal, but then it becomes external in terms of how we deal with people and how we see people, our worldview, and how we interact with people. When it turns into that, we then lack that fundamental trust in others. And sometimes your insecurities, your personal insecurities, turn into your mistrust or distrust for the world around you. And the people that are surrounding you had absolutely nothing to do with your particular disposition, but your insecurities are not only impacting the way you feel inwardly, now your insecurities are beginning to impact your relationships. That's one of the, that's one of the challenges of leadership. It's to be surrounded by people that are, you know, dedicated to helping you in the vision, but have personal insecurities that always put them on the wrong side of others. See, it's, it's, a, it's a bad place to put a man or a woman uh, with low self-esteem, it's a bad place to put them in, uh, or it's, it's, it's a horrific move, rather, to put them into higher positions. And how often do we see in the church and even in the workplace, people with low self-esteem occupying lofty positions? Now, there's, so there's an internal impact, and then there's the, the social impact of our insecurity. This lack of confidence, lack of confidence in me and lack of confidence in everybody around me. I can't trust anybody. It's one of the it's one of the major drawbacks in a leader's life when a leader 
cannot trust others, that leader tends to micromanage, that leader tends to be highly critical, that leader tends to um, uh, create unnecessary friction within his or her own camp because there is this what personal insecurity. Now, the word itself, insecurity, it kind of reveals its own truth for us. If you look at the, the, the prefix in, insecurity always comes from a place within the person. There's something within you that does not allow you to trust. There's something within you that won't allow you to make the move, to take the risk. There's something within you. And a lot of times this thing that's on the inside of us that produces these insecurities is something that goes as far back as our childhood that was never processed or dealt with accurately. And now that seed is growing up and producing a harvest of insecurities. It's preventing your relationships. It's preventing your um, professional climb. It's preventing your social interactions. It's preventing your quality of life from manifesting because there's something within you that won't allow you to see yourself properly, nor will it allow you to see the world around you uh, in perspective. If you go to one of my favorite texts, Numbers 13 and 33, the context is Israel has gotten out of Egypt through the wilderness. Now they're right on the brink of the promised land. And so uh, they, they're going in to spy out the land. Moses sends them in to spy out the land and sends 12 spies. 10 come back with a negative report. We can't do it. Insecurities. Two say, yeah, we can do it. Caleb and Joshua. But listen to what the word says. Gives you, gives you some insight to their broken consciousness. If you look in Numbers 13 and 33, it says they're reporting back. The, the, this is the negative group. They're reporting back to the nation now. Ten men, ten negative, insecure men. They said, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Their personal insecurities influenced their social perspective because they saw themselves as nothing but grasshoppers. They concluded that everybody around us sees us as grasshoppers. You know, when you think about this, now you understand why uh, so many people have a struggle fitting into uh, settings, you know, people bounce from one church to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. People can't keep jobs and they're from one job to the next, to the next. And it's always those people, you know, they, uh, they, they didn't, they discriminated against me. They didn't, they didn't respect my value. And the reality in most of those cases is that if you were to do a deep dive into the psyche of those people, you will discover people that are incapable of planting and being stable in social settings are usually people that have a poor self image and everything around them becomes offensive. Everything and everybody around them is, is somebody that's looking down on them. Somebody that's making little of them. They get offended and the people around them are trying to figure out why is this person offended? It's because in their own eyes, they were as grasshoppers. And so they perceived that they looked like grasshoppers in everybody else's life. So the beginnings of improving the quality of one's life is to increase, sharpen, improve your self perspective. And when you improve your self perspective, then your perspective of how the world views you will change. 
The way you walk into a room will change. The way you behave when you get into that room will change. Now, there are three things that I want to share with you, just three, not that that's, this is an inexhaustible subject matter, but I want to share these three tragedies of possessing and not processing a spirit of insecurity. Number one, when you have an insecure spirit, you take the strengths of others as a personal reflection on you. You take another person's wins and or successes and you will view that as a reflection on you. So because they're winning, it means that I'm a loser. It's kind of like the, the Cain and Abel thing. You know, he could not rejoice in his brother's win because he viewed it as a reflection on himself. And so rather than improve himself, he decided to just kill his brother. When, when you are struggling with a spirit of insecurity, you take the strengths of others as a reflection on you. This is where you become a gossiper. That's one of, that's one of the habits of church folk that I never, I, I really never get used to. And it, it runs rampant throughout every church, just a band of gossipers, people that don't have anything else to do but just run around talking about other people's business. And when you're a gossiper, you, you, you know, you, you, you pretty much a liar too because you add to it. And, and you're adding to it because, and you're doing all of this gossiping, talking about people because you don't really feel good about you. And you take those person's wins as a direct reflection on you. So if my if my brother does well, people say, well, how is it that two brothers can work together so closely? And the world says both of them are alpha males, you know, whatever that means. You know, we're both leaders. How do we work so well together? It's because he has Samuel Blakes has a strong self view. R.C. Blakes has a strong self view when my brother wins. I don't get jealous of my brother. I celebrate my brother. I view his wins as my wins. When I win, he celebrates me. Come on now. If, if either, of, either of us had a spirit of insecurity, we would not be able to do what we do together. But how many of you that are watching this message right now, every time you see somebody else thriving in an area where maybe you're not even gifted, you can't celebrate them. Because you view their strengths as a reflection on you. You think that when people look at them and say, wow, he can do that or she can do that. You think that people automatically turn to you and say, well, you can't do that. People are not even thinking about you in that moment. All you need to do is to live out your full potential and the world will celebrate your strengths as well. If you look in... Um, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 7 and 9, we see the great King Saul, high position, low self-esteem. And he had, he had an amazing servant, spiritual son by the name of David, who served him diligently. But look at what the text says. In 1 Samuel 18, 7, and 9, 7 through 9, and the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul, they're singing, hath slain his thousands. Great accomplishment, right? And David, his ten thousands. Saul, his thousands. And David, his ten thousands. That spirit of insecurity started talking in Saul's head. Look what verse 8, eight says. And Saul was very angry. And the saying, though it was true, this pleased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day forward. The spirit of insecurity in Saul, he took David's strengths as a reflection on him. Now, let me ask you a question. 
Who are you eyeing right now? Who do you have your eye on because you're insecure about something that they have that maybe you don't possess or maybe you do possess it, but maybe theirs is a little more uh, fine tuned. Maybe theirs is sharper and rather than celebrating them, you're hating on them and you're eyeing them and you're trying to find a reason to get this person. And if you get into a position of power, you use all of the strings you can pull to make life miserable for this person on the job, in the family, in the club, in the church. Because you have a spirit of insecurity. You cannot celebrate the strengths of others. Number two, when you when you possess a spirit of insecurity, you will always excuse your way out of great opportunities. When, 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 when it's your time to shine, now see, you'll sit back, you'll sit back in the cut and you'll say of everybody else that gets promoted before you, uh, well, they got it because of racism, sexism, ageism. They got it because of this or they, you know, because of that. And they, they don't want to they don't want to promote me. They don't want to raise me up. They're going to always hold a brother down. But then when you get your opportunity and they call you in and they want to give you the promotion, you try to find a way to talk yourself out of it because your internal constitution is not strong enough to back up your mental ambitions. So you desire all of this stuff that you don't have the inner foundation to uh, substantiate. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. You will excuse your way out of opportunities. When you lack security, when you have a spirit rather of insecurity, people will give you opportunities that you won't even show up for because you don't have faith in yourself. And in most cases, you lack faith in you and you simultaneously lack faith in the God who called you to be what he called you to be. And if you go back to Numbers chapter 13, verses 30 through 32, same story. They, they're spying out the land. Listen to Numbers 13, 30 through 32. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. And possess the land for we are well able to overcome it. This at this point, this, you know, this, this dude is saying, you know, he and Joshua, they're saying, let's go get it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we excuses. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched out unto the children of Israel, saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. Excuses. Because the same God that broke the backbone of Pharaoh's power and delivered you from slavery, the same God that brought you through the wilderness and kept you alive is the same God that promises to go into this promised land with you. But because you, you lack the internal fortitude, you are now making excuses to not rise. They, 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 their insecurities were so bad. When you read the full context, you see where God has this conversation with Moses and he says, I'm not going to be able to bring these dudes in. These people cannot go. They, they are of such a, a shallow mindset. I'm going to have to allow them to die off in this wilderness and then I'm going to have to raise their children up with a new mindset because they will always excuse themselves out of dominion. What is it that what opportunities have you had lately that you made excuses to not take advantage of? What phone calls have you ignored? What opportunities that you, you you've had that you you could have should have shown up for? But you, you made, up an, made up an excuse not to take it and say, maybe next time, understanding already that if they called you again, you already have your next excuse made up. It's because your insecurities are making excuses. Your insecurities are making excuses. 
You see, you know that you're well adjusted when you know what God has called you to do and you have a complete vision. And when it's time to pull the trigger on that vision, you pull the trigger, even if you're afraid you step into it, even if you're afraid, you will do it afraid. That's what faith is all about. Faith is being able to step over your insecurities and to step into your destiny, even if you're afraid. And then number three, and finally, you won't be able to own your success. When you struggle with a spirit of insecurity, there are a few things that go along with that. Uh, and one of those things is you want people to like you. You need to be accepted. You, you are pretty much living uh, caught up in the approval trap. You need people to approve. And so sometimes you are winning, winning and God is blessing you and you'll hide it. You'll cover it up. You, you'll be afraid to own your own success because of fear of what people might think. There are many of you that are watching me right now who have dumbed yourselves down. You have you have shrunken yourself. You have put yourself in a matchbox when God has made you for the globe. But because you have insecurities, you are afraid to own your own success. How many times have I sat down and talked with women who uh, single women who are afraid to even buy their own house, scared that if I have too much, it's going to scare uh, a man off. Any man that's afraid of you having owning your own house is not man enough for you anyway, to be honest with you. But what is that? That's insecurity. That's the need to be accepted. You, 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 you need to be accepted more than you feel a need to actualize your own individuality. God put you here to manifest everything that he's put in you. But when you're insecure, you hold, you hold yourself back and you hold yourself down. And you won't, even when you are rising and climbing, you won't be able to own your success because you're always afraid that somebody. Listen to what the Bible says in Isaiah 63 and 7. And this is the amplified version. And it says, I will tell of the loving kindness of the Lord. And the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, according to all the, at the, that the Lord has done for us and his great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he has shown them according to his compassion and according to the abundance of his loving kindness. He says, I will what? Tell of the loving kindness of the Lord. I'm going to publish the goodness of God. I am not going to hold back. I am going to make known the goodness of God throughout all the land. I'm going to own the blessings of God that are on my life. Anybody that can't handle it ain't supposed to take this ride. Come on, somebody. You cannot allow your insecurities to prevent you from enjoying your success. You've worked for it. You've prayed for it. You've done it the right way. And now you're so afraid of what some you know, people are going to say or what they're going to think that you can't own your success. Babe, you better break out of that. You better break out of that. Own your success. So now let me close with this. Those are the tragedies. Here's the answer. One point. Just do it. Bishop, I, 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 I see myself in this message. How do I get out of it? Just do it. Just do it. Insecurities are like a house burning down. Wherever you find a window, just do it. At a certain point, you just got to do it. Because there's no such thing as living your life without apprehensions. That's good common sense. All of us have certain fears and certain things we're, you know, we, we're, we're, we're wondering about. And, but when it comes down to it, you know that this is what God has ordained. And you know that this is your moment. You got to just do it. The only antidote for insecurity is action. You find yourself jealous of somebody. You see their strengths as a reflection on you. That's jealousy. That's envy. Well, what you got to do is you got to celebrate them on purpose. You got to celebrate them on purpose. And I'm not talking about some old false, 
phony celebration. I mean, celebrate them until your spirit overrides your broken soul. And then your, your spirit is already happy. And now the, the joy that's in your spirit begins to resonate in your soul. And now you're doing what? You're renewing your mind and transforming your life. You just got to do it. You, you, it's, not, it's not going to be a feeling. It's going to be a decision. You break out of insecurities by making certain decisions. The only antidote for insecurity is action. You will never overcome a fear you will not face. Go to, go to Deuteronomy and I'm done. Deuteronomy 11 verses 22 through 25 says, For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways and to cleave unto him. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. You're going to overcome obstacles and enemies that the world says you should have never overcome. Watch verse 24. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall be your coast. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he hath said unto you. Now, what's the driving factor? What is the driving point of this block of verses? They had to do it. God pronounced it, God ordained it, but every place, verse 24, wherever the soles of your feet shall tread upon shall be yours. It will never be yours if you don't walk it out. There comes a point and a time that you just got to do it. You got to take the leap. You got to learn to celebrate people that are rising even when your broken consciousness is trying to get you to hate on them. There comes a point you just got to do it. No wonder the Bible says, the psalmist says in Psalms 51, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If you find yourself struggling with a spirit of insecurity right now, you need to pray for God to create a clean heart and renew within you a right spirit, a spirit, a mindset that agrees with God, a mindset that walks by faith and not by sight, a mindset that celebrates others, a right spirit. I pray that you got something out of this today.